Bionicle, Legends Number 11, The Final Battle, by Greg Farshti. Chapter 2 We were not always like this, you know, Krika said with something in his voice that Gally never thought she would hear from a Makuta. Regret. The Toa of Water was still feeling weak and dizzy from Krika's attack. She did her best to ignore it. One of her strengths had always been the ability to listen and to try to understand both her friends and her enemies. She had a chance to do that now with this Makuta, and she wasn't going to blow it. I know, she replied. The swamp water must have mutated. Krika shook his head sadly. I'm not talking about how we look. I'm talking about what we are. A piece of advice, Toa. If you keep focusing only on the now, there isn't going to be any later. The Makuta turned ghostly and floated up off the ground. There was a time back when Makuta Miserex let us that the Brotherhood stood for something. Oh, you would not remember him. You were asleep at the time. But he embraced our true mission. Under his guidance, we created Rahi beasts that are still of use to the Matoran today. When the Matoran Civil War happened on Metru Nui, it was Miserix who decreed we Makuta must get more involved in the world outside of our laboratories. He paused for a moment, then added, That was the beginning of the end. Gali knew the rest of the story all too well. The Brotherhood rebelled against the Great Spirit Matanui, casting him into an unending sleep and plunging the universe into a time of darkness. The mission of the Toa Nuva was to undo that criminal act and awaken Matanui once more. When we saw the universe beyond our towers, we discovered how Matanui was honored, respected, and loved by the Matoran, said Krika. That was love and devotion we felt we deserved for the thousands of things we had done to better their lives. Jealousy turned to resentment, and resentment to hate. And when Makuta Teradax proposed we strike at Matanui and seize power, we turned away from Miserix and followed his lead. And what happened to Miserix? asked Gali. She could feel her strength returning. If she could keep Krika talking, she would soon be able to make a break for freedom. Teradax wanted to kill him, Krika replied. Makuta Speria and I were given the job, but Speria didn't have the stomach for killing mask to mask. I told him I would handle it, but instead I brought Miserix to a volcano island in the south and imprisoned him there. So you disobeyed, said Gali. I didn't think Makuta had the spines to do that. Krika shrugged sending a strange ripple of motion through his intangible form. Perhaps we do not, he said quietly. Should the volcanoes erupt with enough force and for enough time, Miserex will have no hope for survival. I gave him a chance, that's all. Gali said nothing. She was remembering how Tahu and Kopaka had been dispatched by the Order of Matanui to stop a series of volcanic eruptions on a southern island shortly before the team came to Kardanui. Could it have been the same place that Miserix was imprisoned? As I now give you one, said Krika. He pushed something toward her through the mud. Gali picked it up and used the slice bit of her elemental power to wash the soil away. She saw it was a piece of stone, about the size of her hand, with the symbol of the Brotherhood of Makuta engraved on it. With that, anyone, even you, can pass through unharmed the forces of the Brotherhood, Krika continued. Take it. I will lead you to an exit from this place. Return to Metronui, Zia, anywhere that's not here. Just go, Gali, if you value your universe. Gali was surprised at the urgency in his voice, but unconvinced by his plea. If you want me gone, why not just kill me? You have the power. Krika smiled. The expression gave Gali chills. The Makuta have a legend. It says that when one of us dies... All that we have put out into the universe comes back to us. For tens of thousands of years, I have put fear, pain, and death out into the universe. Perhaps I want to add a strain of mercy to that mix. Gali studied the Makuta. Was this a trick? Some attempt to weaken the Toa's ranks? None of it made sense. Why, she said finally. Why do you want me gone? Or is it that you simply want one less Toa Nuva and Karda Nui? Krika laughed softly. It was a hollow and horrible sound, somehow worse to Gali's ears than a scream of rage would have been. You should have been a Makuta, Gali. You are far too clever to be a mere Toa. You knew of our here to awaken Matanui, a mission that requires all six of you. I tell you that if you do this, 
You and everything you know, everything you love, will be doomed to a future more horrible than you can imagine. Leave here now, and that future cannot come to pass.